Do we need to be concerned that the choline in perc choline citrate will rise the TMAO level? It's a metabolite of quaternary amines, and you do not want to build up the metabolites of quaternary amines. And how do we avoid that? Well, we avoid that by checking the transit time, because you want a healthy transit time of 12 to 18 hours. We avoid that with the ascorbate, because by the way, when you have enough ascorbate, you set a nice healthy low redox or oxidation reduction potential. And now you do not oxidize the choline to the TMAE. More importantly, a healthy transit time, a C cleanse to set the redox. In our experience, people who have taken the choline citrate, which is so easily absorbed while it enhances the uptake of magnesium, and then the choline itself becomes the basis for acetylcholine in the brain, for cholinergic bile salts that make more soluble bile to get toxins out of the liver, to bind those to fiber in the diet and get them out of the body promptly. So if you follow our joy of living the alkaline way program, there is 0, 0.0 chance. I, I am unaware of anyone who following our alkaline way approach has the problem of converting choline to TMAE. That only happens in the colon when the, when the quaternary amines are there for too long a time, meaning a very long transit time. You handle that by checking the transit time, by doing the potent C, uh, C cleanse assessment, by including repair either as the pain guard or as the PERC repair guard, and knowing with confidence that PERC would never produce a product that induced the problem that doesn't exist, that our competitors want people to be concerned about because they have nothing better to say about their product. So yes, a long transit time and an excess of quaternary amines like choline can lead to a problem. <clears throat> but if you follow the joy of living the alkaline way, you won't have a long transit time, at least not for long.